So we're familiar with the concept of single sign-on, but we also have the concept of federation. So single sign-on is a way for a user to authenticate once and then be granted access to multiple resources. This can make it easier to do password management because only one password has to be memorized by the user. It could make it simpler and more efficient, especially if a user has to authenticate to you know, five or more resources instead of sending up a password and logging into every single one. The user only has to authenticate one time. Kerberos is an example of a great feder uh, single sign-on technology that would allow a user to authenticate once and then be access granted access or authenticated to multiple resources. Federation is a similar concept, but it occurs between organizations, between different corporations. A good example of how this is used is when colleges or universities want to share research data. They may have a system set up where professors or students can sign on and then be granted access to research data from multiple colleges. So like MIT, Stanford, Princeton might want to share research data on a specific subject, and they can set up a federation environment where papers, uh, research results, any educational material is shared amongst those colleges. So a user that authenticates within one of those organizations will be authenticated to every organization in the federation. There's a few technologies that we use to make this possible. One is Security Assertion Markup Language, or SAML. SAML is based on extensible markup language, why it has markup language in the name. And as we know, XML is a tool used to structure data, used in XML databases. It's extensible, means it's, it can be applied to multiple types of data. And data in XML is usually sorted by data tag. So with SAML, uh, you can set up uh, SAML associations with multiple organizations. And this will allow someone to sign in to a website using a different set of credentials without having to set, make a set of credentials for that website, for example. Uh, Google uses SAML, so you can often go to various websites and it gives you the option to sign in using your Google account. That's made possible using SAML. It allows users to authenticate to different web resources without having to create a separate set of credentials or a separate account with that particular website. And this can be uh, very desirable for owners of the website or owners of web application to make it easier for users to access their site they could accept Google credentials or Google accounts, and that would make it, they're trying to promote ease of use and draw more users into their, their site. So that's one of the advantages why a website might set this up. Of course, it benefits Google, because Google is showing more utility for their account. Now, SAML has three main roles. We have a principal, we have the identity provider, and then the service provider. The principal is the entity that's accessing the website or the resource. This is usually the user. The identity provider is responsible for creating and managing the information about the principal. So in our Google example, Google would be the identity provider. They manage the account credentials, the username and password for the Google account. The service provider is the website that hosts the service and provides the opportunity to use that set of credentials. So this is where the user would be using the website where the user is using their Google account to sign on. So the process would happen and the user would first connect to the service provider, the website, then they're forwarded to the identity provider to authenticate. Now the authentication process occurs using tokens. It's a tokenization solution. So the username and password is not transmitted in any way. A token that represents the user is transmitted so that through SAML, the password, the username and password never has to be shared, just a token that represents that user. So that makes it quite secure. 
Another made uh, Federation technology is OAuth. OAuth, current version 2.0, OAuth 2, as it's commonly referred to, or just OAuth. It's an open standard. It's, this is the standard that allows for federations between different companies. Again, just like SAML, uh, it works a little differently, but it, the same concept allows one user to access or log into a website using another company's credentials. Now, Facebook likes to use OAuth. So if you ever logged into a certain site using Facebook credentials, you were maybe unknowingly using OAuth. And again, this is accomplished through the use of tokens. So you'd have to set up an API or application programming interface on the target website that you're trying to authenticate to. That website would have to have an API with Facebook to allow for that federation. The protocol that works with OAuth is called OpenID Connect. So OpenID Connect uses tokens to represent the users that are trying to sign on to a certain website. So OpenID Connect is the authentication protocol and OAuth is the standard. Now there's one more you should be aware of that's called Shibboleth. This is another, it's an open source authentication protocol. It's managed by Internet2 which is a nonprofit based in the United States and includes libraries for Java, C++, to help organizations implement this. Uh, shibboleth is an old biblical term, and it was, uh, I'm not going to get into that, but that's where that, that strange name, it sounds a little, it's an old Hebrew word, uh, but that's where that comes from. So those are three major authentication, uh, federation authentication solutions. The, with the main ones by far being SAML and OAuth.